a voracious tadpole hunter, a flying scuba diver, and the holder of the most unusual eyes in the animal kingdom. This is one of the most specialized insects in the world, but it has colonized most freshwater ponds and streams in warm and temperate climates. This is the diving beetle. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Diving beetles are found all over the world in ponds with leafy cover. They live in every continent except, you guessed it, Antarctica. There are over 4,000 species and they range in size from about 1 centimeter to 5 centimeters long. Most diving beetles are brown or black, but the more stylish species can rock the polka dot look. Diving beetles are masters of the land, water, and air. They spend most of their lives underwater, though they're good flyers and will go from pond to pond looking for new sources of food. Their ability to fly is especially important to species in warmer climates, as their ponds tend to evaporate in the summer. To avoid predators such as birds and dragonflies, they fly at night and rely on chemoreception to find new ponds. Once they find a new pond, they dive down and look for vegetation. Their long and powerful hind limbs propel them as they look for the perfect plant or rock to cling to. If live prey or a carcass drifts nearby, they'll pounce on it and devour it. When it comes to diving beetles, most things are on the menu, as they're often rushing to get enough energy to molt, pupate, or reproduce. Mosquito larvae, tadpoles, and carrion of larger vertebrates are their most common prey, and they'll often gang up to eat it. Even crickets are readily eaten if they happen to fall into the water. My favorite species is the sunburst diving beetle. It was only discovered in 1996, but since then it's become one of the most popular beetles at zoos and aquaria. Their beautiful coloration is a warning to predators. In the back of their head, they have glands that secrete a noxious milky substance. Most predators seem to avoid these little guys, but their defenses are especially effective against fish, as their chemicals contain fish deterrent steroids. The males also have tiny suction cups on their frontal limbs to help them attach themselves to rocks and to stick themselves to females for more convenient access during mating. These little guys have a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. They're literal scuba divers. They're able to get air from the surface and make a bubble under their wings. The bubble is also known as a physical gill and extends towards the back of the animal where its breathing holes are located. The amazing thing about the bubble is that unlike scuba tanks, it can take oxygen from the surrounding water. This gives them extra diving time, but after a while the oxygen gets depleted. The beetle then releases its bubble and goes to the surface to get a new one. Unfortunately for the beetle, their bubble is also home to parasites. Mites attach themselves to their underwings and rely on the beetle's air to survive. If the beetle dies in the water, the mites die too, as they can't live anywhere else. Their association goes back over a hundred million years and it's one of the oldest extant examples of obligate parasitism. Diving beetles are one of the rare examples in nature where the babies are cooler than the grown-ups. Their larvae are called water tigers due to their unmitigated badassery. Water tigers are longer than adult diving beetles and have huge pincers to catch prey. Their hunting strategy consists mostly of waiting for pond critters to swim too close. Then, the water tiger attacks and chases the prey with quick, undulating motions. Tadpoles seem to be their favorite prey. Adult diving beetles often lay their eggs on frog eggs so that when the water tigers emerge, they have a ready source of food. After they gorge themselves with delicious baby frogs and are ready to pupate, 
they come out of the water. They bury themselves in mud to undergo their complete metamorphosis. The water tigers of the sunburst diving beetle have some of the most unusual eyes in the entire animal kingdom. They are the only known example of truly bifocal vision. Their eyes have bifocal lenses connected to two separate retinas. The lenses are able to create two separate sharp images, each of which goes to a different retina. Unfortunately, the precise function of this arrangement is unknown, but it might help them to keep an eye on distant predators and the same eye on nearby prey. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching and see ya!